In this video, I talk about what buyer should do differently when the supplier has a constant lead time. The buyer faces same cost from case one, uh, total inventory holding cost, uh, total ordering cost, and the purchase cost. Let us revisit the example we saw in the case one, where the demand is 70 units per week. The buyer has the ordering quantity of 70 units and the supplier has a lead time zero. Since the lead time is zero, the buyer places an order of 70 at the end of Saturday and receives it instantaneously. Now, let us assume the lead time is two days. Now, the buyer has to place an order of 70 by the end of Thursday. Equivalently, when the buyer, buyer's inventory level is equal to 20 units, the buyer need to place an order. We know uh, to satisfy the demand on Friday and Saturday, the buyer need to carry 20 units since each day has a demand of 10 units. So the reorder point is nothing but the product of average demand and lead time. So if the lead time is three days, the reorder point is three times 10, that is 30 units. If the lead time is four days, the reorder point is four times 10, that is 40 units. Basically, the ordering quantity never changes from case one to case two. Only thing that is that changes is the point at which the buyer places an order, that is the reorder point. In case one, when the inventory level is zero, the buyer places an order. However, in case two, when the inventory level is equal to L times D bar, the buyer places an order. So when the lead time is constant, it becomes difficult for the buyer to track the inventory position. For instance, when the lead time is zero, it is simple. When the buyer runs, runs out of the product, he or she can order and receives it instantaneously. That is not possible with a constant lead time. Now the buyer needs to know a couple of things. How many orders to be received? That is orders that have been placed but have not yet been received. That is scheduled receipts. How many on hand, physical inventory, and how many pending orders that are need to be satisfied that are called back orders. So the inventory position is equal to sum of on hand and scheduled receipts minus the back orders. Let us take a look at how inventory position and reorder point interact with each other using a small example. So this is a good time for you guys to pause the video, read the problem and come back. Supermarket has a daily demand of 25 cases and the lead time is four days. On hand inventory is 10 cases. They are scheduled to receive 200 cases. So with that, let us calculate the reorder point first. Reorder point is a product of demand and lead time, which is equal to 100 cases. For inventory position, you need to add on hand inventory of 10 cases and scheduled receipts of 200 cases. That equals to 210 cases. In this example, there are no back orders that need to be satisfied. So given the inventory level is higher than the reorder point, the decision is not to place an order. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it.